So in this video, we're going to be looking at covalent bonding and how we can actually draw a dot and cross diagram for it as well. Now, covalent bonding is described as being the shared pair of electrons itself, right? And so if I were to look at, let's say, a molecule of XY itself, and both of these are going to be in group 7, we know that group 7 elements have 7 electrons in the outer shell, and we need to get 8. We need to get a full octet of 8 electrons itself. How can we do that? Well, we can share electrons, and so we can form a shared pair, right? And so if I were to draw a dot and cross diagram similar to your ionic bonding dot and cross diagrams we're going to end up with some sort of a venn diagram and we're going to have a shared pair of electrons over here and we're going to have dots to represent the electrons from x's atom and then crosses to represent the electrons from y as an atom itself as well and you can see in total each atom has eight electrons in its outer shell the happy the stable even though one of the electrons is shared with the other atom itself, right? Now, if that's the case, you need to be aware of outliers to the octet rule. And so when you look at boron, boron is happy with six electrons in its outer shell, and sulfur can expand its octet, and you can end up with 12 electrons in its outer shell itself as well. Now, when we look at the first example over here, we're asked to draw a dot and cross diagram and the displayed formula for oxygen. And what I like to do is to draw a little table to show where I've got my oxygens, atoms, electrons, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in its outer shell because it's in group six, and then the same thing with the other oxygens, electrons itself as well. So in that case, right, I can actually form a shared pair over here, and I end up with now, right, seven electrons outside of this oxygen's outer shell and then seven electrons outside of this oxygen's outer shell as well and so if that's the case right what i can actually end up doing is forming another shared pair so that i actually end up with eight electrons where six of them are this oxygen's own electrons but the other two come from sharing right so in that case if i were to draw a diagram i would end up with a venn diagram that looks like this i'd have a dot and a cross dot and a cross for each oxygen over here and then any electrons that aren't involved in bonding itself you can see here i've got two pairs in each we draw that on the outer shell as well like how you can see i'm doing over here itself yeah so there is my dot and cross diagram for a molecule of oxygen and so if I were to look at this, right, I've got two atoms of oxygen. We don't need to show any uh, lone pairs or any non-bonding electrons, but we do need to show the shared pairs where one shared pair is going to be equal to one bond, so one line between the two atoms, and two shared pairs, like how we've got in this case, is going to be equal to two bonds, a double bond, and so we've got two lines between the atoms itself as well. Three shared pairs is three bonds, and so that's a triple bond, three lines, and I hope this makes sense in terms of what we need to do in terms of displayed formula so yeah if we were to draw the dot and cross diagram and the displayed formula for tetrachloromethane in this case we follow our same method as before i've got carbon it's in group four it's going to have four electrons in its outer shell chlorine is going to be in group seven so it has seven electrons in its outer shell itself as well right and so i end up with something that looks like that because i've got four chlorine atoms what i need to think is is i've got four atoms that i need to bond to so in that case the thing that has the most electrons missing normally can form the most bonds and so i know that carbon is going to be the central atom it's going to be the atom in the middle right i'm going to have four chlorines right bonded to that carbon so i can form one shared pair here another shared pair here another shared pair here and another shared pair here as well and that leaves me with four electrons in carbon's outer shell along with the fifth sixth seventh and eighth being from chlorine itself as shared electrons so in total eight electrons in carbon's outer shell itself so i draw my uh, remaining venn diagram out and i end up with a dot and a cross dot and a cross dot and a cross dot and a cross carbon in the middle and then i've got chlorine right bonded to that as well i need to draw out my crosses for the electrons that aren't involved in bonding chlorine's non-bonding electrons it's lone pairs three on each atom and i end up with something that looks like this And then if I were to draw out the displayed formula, I've got carbon and then I've got four shared pairs and one is going to each chlorine atom itself. And so I end up with something that looks like this. So there's my dot and cross diagram done as well as my displayed formula itself. Now I've got two examples that I want you to have a go at. Feel free to pause the video and then resume once you're ready to move on. 
So in this case, I've got chlorine, two atoms. I know chlorine's in group seven. So I'm going to have seven electrons in its outer shell. And then this chlorine, I'm going to have crosses for those seven electrons. I can form a shared pair and I can end up with chlorine, which is going to be bonded to another chlorine atom. And that looks like this. And then don't forget to add in your non-bonding electrons as well. Displayed formula is pretty straightforward. I've got chlorine bonded to chlorine, which looks like this as well. What about the next one? I've got methane, I've got carbon, and then that's going to be bonded to four hydrogens. Remember, hydrogen can only have two in its outer shell, and I've got four electrons in carbon's outer shell. Hydrogen has one each, and we can form, right in this case, a bond over here, a bond over here, a bond over here, and a bond over here, making carbon have eight electrons, where four are its own, and the other four come from hydrogen sharing. Hydrogen now has two electrons in each of their outer shells, where one electron is its own, and one electron comes from carbon itself. So again, I've got carbon in the middle, and then I've got four hydrogen atoms itself, which are going to look like this. I'm going to have a shared pair in each one of them. And there's the dot and cross diagram for methane. What about if I were to look at, let's say, the displayed formula? I'm going to have carbon bonded. I've got four shared pairs, one to each hydrogen atom itself. And there's a displayed formula as well. Two more examples. Pause the video and have a go. So yeah, I look at nitrogen. I've got two nitrogen atoms, one bonded to another. And I've got because it's in group five, I'm going to have five electrons in the outer shell, and I'm going to form one shared pair, two shared pair, three shared pairs, and that's what gives me, right, a full octet. If I formed another shared pair, I'd actually end up with nine electrons in each nitrogen's outer shell, so I can't do that. If I formed, let's say, two, I would end up with one less than I need, so I end up with seven electrons, but in this case, I've got three shared pairs. If I were to draw the diagram, I've got nitrogen, Bonded to another nitrogen, so I've got dot and cross, dot and cross, dot and cross. You can't put dot, 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 and then cross, cross, cross. You can't put dots like this together uh, as well. You can't put a dot next to a cross like this as well, because that doesn't work. I need to put in my non-bonding electrons as well, so I've got two dots. I've got two crosses, and then there is my dot and cross diagram for nitrogen. Displayed formula, I'm going to have nitrogen, because I've got three shared pairs. It's a triple bond, triple line to the other nitrogen itself. Next one, we've got boron trichloride. Remember that boron is an exception to this rule where it's happy to have six electrons in its outer shell. It's only got three though. How are we going to get six? Well, chlorine has seven electrons in its outer shell, which I've got seven now. And we've got three chlorine atoms. And these three chlorine atoms, they need to have eight electrons in the outer shell. How are we going to end up going from seven to eight? Well, we can form one shared pair here, another shared pair here, another shared pair here. And that gives us right in boron's outer shell it gives us three add one add one add one that's six electrons in total where three of them are shared and then in each chlorine i've got seven electrons and then i've got the one electron that's come from boron itself to make the shared pair so in that case i end up with boron and then i'm going to draw this out so that it's big enough to show the chlorines and i'm going to have three chlorine atoms there I've got a dot and a cross, dot and a cross, dot and a cross, and then I need to show chlorine's non-bonding electrons as well, which should look something like this itself, yeah? And so I end up with that, right? So moving on, right, if I were to draw my displayed formula, I've got one, two, three chlorines there itself. So moving on, right, I've got two more examples, a bit more trickier. Feel free to pause the video and have a go yourself. So here I've got nitrogen bonded to three hydrogens itself. Nitrogen's in group five. It has five electrons that are its own. And then hydrogen has one electron each. So we can form one shared pair, another shared pair, another shared pair here as well. And that gives me a total of eight electrons in nitrogen's outer shell. And then it also gives me two electrons in hydrogen's outer shell for each hydrogen itself. The dot and cross diagram would look like this, where we need to take into account our lone pair as well. We're going to have hydrogen, hydrogen again, and then hydrogen again. I've got a dot and a cross, and there is my dot and cross diagram for ammonia. What about the displayed formula? Remember, we don't show the lone pairs. I end up with something that looks like this itself. Yeah. What about sulfur hexachloride? Well, sulfur, we know, that can have, right, 
12 electrons in its outer shell but we know right we've got six electrons all together and if i were to look at chlorine if i've got six chlorine atoms right straight away i know i can form six bonds to that sulfur because that can expand its octet and you can end up with 12 electrons in its outer shell and so i know chlorine they each have seven electrons in the outer shell I'm just going to copy and paste this over to make it a bit quicker. And each chlorine itself, it wants to have eight electrons in its outer shell. How's it going to do that? Well, it's going to share a pair each with sulfur itself. And so what we end up with is one shared pair over here, another shared pair over here, another shared pair over here. That's three. Then we've got four. Then we've got five. And then we've got six. So in total, sulfur now has six electrons of its own. And then it shares the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth electrons with each chlorine atom. So this diagram is going to be quite hard to draw i've got sulfur i'm going to draw that as big as possible and then each chlorine itself is going to look like this i've got two chlorines three four and then five and then six i'm going to have a dot and a cross in each one of these and then for each chlorine i'm going to have three lone pairs six electrons that aren't involved in bonding And there is my dot and cross diagram displayed formula. I'm going to have six bonds to each chlorine atom as well.